hooked and left. Crosby normally as dependable as any kicker in the NFL. Packers denied points here in the opening quarter. 7-0 Lions. Young rookie wide receivers aren't getting the job done. 42-yard field goal try is no good again by Crosby. Holy mackerel, can you believe it? Everything that could go wrong has. And that's your Detroit Lions beating the Green Bay Packers because Mason Crosby couldn't hit a field goal. Thanks, Mason. We'll be sending a care package very soon. Definitely. And honestly, he is the reason why. If he hits his kicks, Lions lose that game. Yeah. Um, welcome into the show. It's October 10th. Views from the sideline. We're doing our Central Division preview. Breaking down Lions win. Joey's confidence level in the Lions. Once again, it's a weekly tradition here on the show. Uh, we'll talk some Michigan, talk some state. But what's going on, guys? How's your week? As a man that respects kickers, I, I really feel bad for Mason Crosby in this one. I mean, I, he's he's been oh he's been kicking over ninety percent his entire career with the Packers, and th- this one Sunday, it, it can just come down to one Sunday for a kicker, and they'll forget about you forever. It's, and it wasn't like it's a tough position. It wasn't like it weather really was is. bad or you're playing outside. No, yeah, um, it had seventy-two to be, degrees and the dome. A mental thing. Yeah, after he missed the first one. And then he changed shoes yeah. and then still had issues. But go Lions. This and might they, be the weirdest season in Lions weird. history. They, I weren't, don't, they weren't even long kicks. He missed like an extra yeah. point. He made a 56-yarder, didn't some he? Some chip yeah. shots that he missed. It was weird. Yeah. But I'll take it. I'll take it. The, the way Lions get wins, the way the Lions have to get wins is... That's how it is, hey, man. Usually they're on the other side of that. So True. I'm just thankful yeah. that you know they got this one pulled out. Um, we'll touch more on the Lions here in a second. I do want to start the show like we usually do, talking some Spartans. And uh, a couple weeks ago, Spartans were giving the Michigan Wolverines and the Wolverine fan base some flack because they struggled with Northwestern. MSU plays Northwestern. What happens? 29-19 loss for the Spartans. I'm going to go to Malik here first. What happened? It's time for Mark for. Mark, yeah, Mark D'Antoni, Mark D'Antonio, <laughs> to do some serious soul searching because I thought you were gonna say for him to step down. <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh no, it's a hot take early. Oh no, I'm not gonna go that far. But yet, if if he doesn't fix this in a year or two, he could be out, or he might just step down because what he's letting this program become it's it's very alarming because. He kept the same staff that he kept after the three and nine season. Last year they had a magical season where they pulled out all these last minute wins. Now you, you're really starting to see what this team looks like with it's under recruiting, really bad coaching all around. It's the there are a few players that are big, like getting wins for the team and saving them. Brian Lewerke, those dynamic receivers. You have certain parts that are keeping you afloat, but as a whole, I mean, I I don't know what to think about this Michigan State team right now. It's, Malik laying it's into the Spartans. Uh, that's his inner Michigan mm-hmm. coming through. But but uh, Sid, Mark D'Antonio, he has some decisions to make. If he keeps the same coaching staff after the season, even the fan base has been saying this. There there have to be changes made. Yeah, Joe, it, it's on him. Definitely is. Joey, what what did you see from that game? Yeah, it's it's pretty concerning. Um, we keep talking about it every week about how, you know, Michigan State, <clears throat> they look rough, but they've kind of made it through. They just keep kind of finding a way to get by. And then this week, they kind of, they didn't like completely fall apart. Like the touchdowns that led to the Northwestern win were big plays, which is obviously concerning. But if they didn't give up those big plays, they had a better chance to stay in this game, but they didn't. Um, I agree with Malik. I think there needs to be some changes. I don't think D'Antonio needs to go, uh, but I think he needs to look at his staff pretty closely and decide if there's some big changes that need to be made because Lewerke's going to be gone. And I don't know. I start thinking that maybe some of these wide receivers will try to get out because, you know, next year I don't think they're well, going to be any better. Why well, stick around right. pretty much. So, yeah. you know, you got to try to ride the wave and – make an NFL push maybe that, you know, this team is going to be in 
even more trouble next year unless they can, you know, find those D'Antonio guys where they go and recruit the uh, smaller prospects and turn them into superstars. We'll have to see, but it's going to be it's going to be rough. And especially now when Michigan State's about to go play some ranked opponents. It's probably, probably going to be ugly. Yeah, they have uh, next week going at Penn State, and then they're at home against Michigan. Yeah, which so they can still win that Michigan game because that game. Do you every, think they have a chance at they playing can, Penn State? No. I, I, nah. No. Zero. But the Michigan game, whether they are at home or at Michigan, there's always a chance. That that game is always a toss up. Yeah. So it is always a toss up, but I think. These teams are going in two different directions. Yeah, Michigan State, Michigan is ramping up and at the right time. If they meet up in two weeks, Michigan State is blown out by Penn State and Michigan beat Wisconsin. That that game could get ugly. Malik Michi- seems like he's ready to go. Michigan State, Let's play right now. Michigan yeah. State don't have no confidence. They they won't have belief in themselves, really. I think for could, that one yeah. game, they can. I, was gonna, yeah. I feel like a rivalry Michi- game is such you, a big rivalry. Yeah, You're going to throw you that, that all, all out the window. Like the, the game, what was it, like a few years ago when – on the the kick, the punt, yeah, the famous one now. Trouble or, with the snap, yeah. Like Michigan was playing pretty good that season. Michigan State was a little bit struggling. Yeah, I mean, things just happened. So I'm just saying for that game, I take all the predictions out the window. It basically. is true that rivalries get thrown out. I mean, records get thrown out the window in rivalries. It's true. Right. So that game, maybe that's their chance. But yeah. So uh, I mean, I th- think all of us can are on the same page here that Michigan State definitely trending in the wrong direction. Not sure if they can turn this around. Um, but let's talk about Michigan, who's doing the opposite, trending up. And like Malik said, ramping up, or Joey said, ramping up for the right part of the season. They beat Maryland 42-21. They, we were expecting them to beat Maryland. But this is a big win for them to get them prepared for Wisconsin this Mar- week. Maryland had has one of the best like they have a top twenty defense in the country, so it yeah, it wasn't just a little team that but they still a team over. you should beat though. Yeah, it was it was a team they should yeah. beat, but it it wasn't just a, a slap of a team. Gotcha. Um, I don't want to go too much into the Michigan over Maryland because they did play well and they got the job done. They doubled them up in score. I kind of want to talk about what we think we'll see for Michigan this coming weekend playing against Wisconsin. Um, uh, it's at the Big House, correct? Yeah. Do you, what's what's your prediction for this weekend, Malik? Well, first, I think throwing your homerism <laughs> out the window, which if if, if that's possible, at I think all. I need to go into Jim Harbaugh because I think he is duping the entire fan base, and it is very weird. Why you say that? He starts out the year against Notre Dame with the most vanilla, conservative offense you ever seen. Nothing exciting, nothing new. He j- he just takes that L. Next week. A little bit more. Next week, a little bit more. Last week against Maryland, it looked like it was almost. It looked like a new half of the playbook was opened for some yeah. reason. Isn't what that and, what you want to do though with like a new quarterback and stuff? You want to ease them into a new offense. That is true, but in that prime time game against Notre Dame, you can't just yeah. No, I understand yeah, what you're saying. You can't call like that, and I, I understand easing a quarterback into a system, but yeah, you want to be aggressive in those big it's, time it's, games. It's it's very weird. How it seems like there's a whole new playbook that is about to start opening in this part of the season. And I hope it continues to look like that. But in terms of this game, seven it's seven thirty prime time. The game day crew is coming to Ann Arbor. This is a huge game. This could swing their momentum for the rest of the season. I think they're Is this the win biggest it. game of the year? Right in ter- now. In, in, right in now. In terms it is. of what it can In terms of what people think about Michigan this is this might be the biggest game of the year if they win this game because this is this is a game that you can kind of propel off of if you win this if they win this game this changes the stigma in what everybody else in the country thinks about that team and the defense is starting to get on a roll Shea Patterson is getting comfortable the O-line looks much improved from what they were in week one the receivers are making plays especially Donovan Peoples-Jones it's looking like he's going to be a real threat for a few years. I feel like he's been at Michigan for a long time. I feel like I've he's just that. a sophomore. Yeah. I know. I feel like <laughs> I, know. I feel like I've <laughs> I feel that way too, for a though. long time. But this, to me, this is a statement game for Michigan, and I think this will be a statement game for them. I'm going to take them. You're taking the Wolverines. Twenty-eight to ten, Michigan. 
Whew. Bold prediction. Because Wisconsin's offense, they're not going to surprise anybody. BYU beat them in Madison. That's true. Yeah. It, there is a script to beat Wisconsin. That's true. Their offense isn't going to change. Yeah. Their defense plays the same way. Their offense hasn't changed in like 20 years. Exactly. <laughs> it's just that they out, they're, they're way too physical for most teams, so they can't be stopped. Michigan's defense can handle the physicality that they're going to bring. They, just, they can't have a slow start. Yeah. They have, they have to be ready from the beginning. No more slow starts. Yeah. You jump out on them, and you don't, you don't give them any room to breathe. Up. Yep. Yeah. Joey, what do you think here? Um, you've, seen, you've watched Michigan the whole early part of the season. You watched them last week. Can they beat Wisconsin and start to kind of propel into maybe a college football playoff type team? Yes, but as it is every year, I don't think this is the biggest game. Obviously, this is a a need. This yeah. game is to, a, to a the need. masses outside of right. Well, yeah. this is, this is a game to like start to solidify this team. Yeah, but the biggest game will always be Ohio State. They're not going to get anywhere. They're not going to get to a football playoff if they don't beat Ohio State. So no matter what, that's going to be the biggest game of the season. Uh, but they need to win this Wisconsin game. And even Michigan State, with a struggling Michigan State, it's still important to beat up on your rival. So it'll be interesting. These next two weeks are going to be uh, important for both teams moving forward to see where they're going and to see if they continue on the trends that they're on right now or if they maybe Michigan State can make a comeback or if Michigan maybe falters or something. But no matter what, they need to beat Ohio State by the end of the season, and that'll be... That'll be the telling sign if this team. So you're, is, you're not buying any hype until they beat Ohio State. I mean, I'm on. I'm a little bit on the hype. Like they're playing really well at the right time, and they're you know they're getting the job done. They're beating the people they're supposed to beat. But now, as we wind down the season, we have they have a couple of uh, tougher opponents coming up. They they have a top five. What they? I think they have the toughest schedule left of any team for the rest of the season. Yeah. So now. Really? Now are the really important games. And even if they win all these next coming games, if they don't beat Ohio State, they're not going anywhere. I mean, they'll go to a bowl game, but if they really... Everybody goes to a bowl game. If they want a (laughs) chance to get in the playoff, they got to beat Ohio State. Fair enough. Joey, I put Malik on the spot. I want to put you on the spot here. Give me prediction for this weekend. Michigan, Wisconsin at Michigan. Um, I think it's going to be a little closer. I think it's going to be 24 to 14. Michigan. I could see I could see that happening. You're going Michigan? I yeah. I I mean, I'll be the realist here. I'm going to pick 28-24 Wisconsin. Um, I don't think Wisconsin's going to put up that many points, but we'll see. But I hope Michigan wins. But some if we if we all pick Michigan, it's not going to happen. It's just how it works. <laughs> okay. Um, I'm still on that theory. It were it's it's a true theory, Joe. Um, let's move on to what we really want to talk about here. What Joey's really wants to talk about wants to yeah. break down, kind of showboat a little bit here. The Detroit Lions beat up on the Green Bay Packers at least for the first half. Kind of yeah. second half was a little bit different. Thirty-one twenty-three. Crosby, Mason Crosby, kicker for Green Bay, cost Green Bay the game. Joey, weekly confidence check. On the Detroit Lions, where you at? Where you stand right here? I told you after this game was a big deal. They're, they're back up. They're they're inching back up. They they don't increase as much anymore. I'm happy you said that because they're still in a in a rough spot. <laughs> there should be no major confidence in this team. Whoa, wait a minute. Whoa, did you see? Whoa. Did Let's you not see, go that far. Did you see how Aaron Rodgers picked that defense apart in the second half? Well, well to be fair, Aaron Rodgers is the second half player, but and Aaron Rodgers is probably the best quarterback in the league. But I think Come most, on, don't, don't I think most, the goat like most that, good Tom quarterbacks Brady. in this league will probably be able to pick apart and the, the linebackers and we don't have that many have, good quarterbacks that we have to go against anymore. We gotta go against what? Aaron Rodgers. I thought we had a time. tough schedule. <laughs> we do. We gotta I mean, play Jared Goff. I guess it's true. I can Cam, Newton, I can Cam Newton hasn't looked that good this year. Uh Kirk Cousins and up and down. So I don't know. But uh this was a good win. It's weird, though, for this game. My biggest, I don't know if it's a concern, but it's just not what I'm used to, I guess. 
the Lions have been winning games and leading for a long time and kind of blowing the lead, which usually it's the opposite way around is where the Lions have to make the comeback. So I like that aspect of, you know, getting out in front and leading the game. But the way they were, they allowed the Packers to come back into that game was pretty terrible. So it's similar to Michigan State where the offense looks good enough to hold them above water, but the defense at times kind of just disappears, and I don't understand why. The, def- the defensive linemen were getting sacks, but it, was, it took like nine or ten seconds for them to get sacks. Right, and that was really... Good to see because yeah. that's something Aaron Rodgers that, just couldn't find people open. That's something that the, this defense hasn't been able to do is to create pressure on a quarterback, and now they finally do. And then, like, they give up all these passes in the second half. It was just really weird. Like, it was like, kind of flipped upside down from what they've been playing this season. But I think they look good. I they, think they do head, in and head into the bye week on a positive note. Um, and that win, like I said, shakes up the division a little bit. I don't know about that. Breaking down the NFC North right now, surprisingly, the Bears lead the division at 3-1. and one. They've won three straight. Uh, Green Bay's 2-2-1, two, two and one, Minnesota 2-2-1, two, two and one, and then you have the Lions at 2-3. and three. Still an uphill battle. I don't think Chicago's going to step off like I think you may think I, they I will. I still think they're I, going I'm to. buying into the Bears' hype. Trubisky, I think, has shown me a little bit more week by week. Khalil Mack is a monster. I don't think, I don't know if you can expect Mitch Trubisky to just. But he's improved. Take I'm, yeah, not, he's, I'm not saying he's, he's going to throw five touchdowns that, and a half every time, but um, I think Joey doesn't give him enough credit for how reliable he is. I just, I just he don't think he does anything special. I don't think you have this he's consistent. I don't, think, I don't think he has to do anything special to to win this division. Honestly, with how poor the play has been, Aaron Rodgers had to will that team to make it competitive last week. Right, but I would I would think And they're beaten up. Even though I like doubt the Vikings as well, I think the Vikings are should be better than the Bears, and I think they'll ramp up a little bit more. I think the Vikings are probably my pick to win the NFC NFC North. Just maybe a game over Chicago. But I think Chicago's gonna be there in the end. Which if you asked me before the season started, I liked them, but I didn't like them this much. Um I just don't I don't see a a path to where the Lions can actually have a feasible chance of winning this division. I don't, I don't see it. I, I honestly don't. Either. I know Joey does. Well, yeah. <laughs> the defense. The defense isn't good enough. No. I, I don't know if they can improve they can't, that they much can't, before the season. The defense can't yeah. play a whole football game. We saw them play a half. That was the most we've seen them play really well against okay. a good offense. Okay, okay. You might be right about the Vi- or the Bears because their schedule is super easy. They're about to play the Dolphins, who are struggling. They're playing the Patriots. That'll be a tough game. Then they play the Jets, Bills. That's a tough game. Jets, Bills, Lions, Stop. Vikings. <laughs> Stop. Hey, the Jets are 2-3, and three too. Lions, uh, Giants, Rams, Packers, 49ers. That's because the Broncos are underwhelming. <laughs> so the Bears, for the most part, have a pretty easy schedule. So and they put money into Case Keenum. So it is what it is. Yeah. I, I, who thought that was a good idea? Case Keen- yes, he had a good postseason run, good finish to the regular season. Why? Same reason why the Texans I signed like Ryan been, Tannehill. I feel to, like uh, he's been solid, though. Not Ryan Tannehill. Brock Osweiler. That's what I meant. Brock Osweiler. Yeah. Shout out to Brock Osweiler. He got paid. I mean, I think Denver's got Stole more. Stole money from the NFL. I think Denver's got more issues than Case Keenum. Josh Smith in the NFL only got paid more. Shout out to Brock Osweiler. Yeah. Man. Chandler Parsons, that's another guy who steals money. From uh, professional basketball teams. That dude hasn't played a lick. But, yeah, we're getting sidetracked here. <laughs> Joey's ca- your conf- confidence level is high. We got him going into the bye week. Who do the Lions play? Uh, what is it? Week seven? Um, is it the Vikes? The Dolphins. Yes, let's go. The Lions play win. the Dolphins? Yeah. That should be a win. Yeah, it should be a win. It'll probably be a loss. <laughs> is it at Miami? <laughs> um, probably. I think it is. I'm not seeing it. It's not showing up. Oh, wait. Yeah, it's at Miami. Okay. Yeah, I'm definitely not picking the Lions. I thought the Lions should beat the Packers, and they won, which means they're going to be like three games where I think they should win, and they're going to lose this season. I mean... It, can't have trust in this team. Exactly. <laughs> Being a Lions fan, you know you can't trust it. It's for some reason, Joey trusts them, has positive thoughts about him. I don't know. But 
let's move on here. I think we've broken down as much as we can That's right now for the Lions. Talk. Yeah, they're going into <laughs> a bye week. Talk. We can't really mm-hmm. break down. I'm not yeah. going to break down the matchup with Miami. Um, I want to get into NFL picks. Last week, you guys were giving me a lot of heat with my picks. And Malik and I tied. We both got 11 correct. Joey set in third place with nine correct picks. That Bills game can't be explained. You got lucky. Hey, <laughs> luck. Sometimes you need you luck. You got lucky. I agree. Current standings are Joey in the lead at 28. Malik nipping at his heels at 27, and then I'm kind of drifting behind at 22. You're still in it, though. I'm still, I, I'm still in the thick of things behind. here. Exactly. It could have been a lot worse this past no. weekend. Uh, you could have been shut out. Oh, it would have been rough. Yeah. Now, let's go get into our first game. Philadelphia Eagles at the New York Giants. Give me the Eagles easy. Malik? Easy. Easy. That's how you feel. You think the Eagles, e- fi- you think they Z. figure it out this week? It's a blowout. They might put Listen, up 40 points this Carson week. Carson Wentz looks good to me, but the team, they, they might they put don't, up 42. The team does not have it. You they go maybe, and gi- they don't have Giants. what they had last please year. Say, I was going to say, they may be struggling, but are they still worse than the Giants? No. <laughs> no. But <laughs> Malik, please pick the Giants. Turnover problems. Yeah. Injury problems. You're all in on Odell at QB, right? Huh? You're all in <laughs> on Odell me? at QB, right? One reverse? Stop it. Okay, listen. <laughs> Eagles at Giants. Come on, please. Giants get their second win of the season. Wow. <laughs> Joey, what you got? The Giants aren't going one in 15, okay? <laughs> They're going to get a few more wins. They've yeah. had some close games. Um, You should pick the Giants, too. I think there's a chance. Nah, I'm going to go with the Eagles. Come on, <clears throat> Joe. Um, Next up, the Indianapolis Colts and my New York Jets. That's a, easy. Give me the Jets. It's at... That, in it's New York. at New York. That's a snooze fest right there. Oh, yeah. this Nobody needs to watch that Andrew game. Luck if you're not is a Colts throw four or Jets picks, fan. Give me the Jets by double figures. Give me the Colts. Andrew Luck is going to throw four picks. <clears throat> give me the Jets. But these these hot takes, that's a hot take right there. That's not, hey, That might be the hottest take no, of the no, no. day. My hottest, my hottest take that came true was Zeke Elliott dropping 150 rushing yards on the Lions. Guess that what? That wasn't a hot yeah, take. That was something that could happen. That was, yeah, that's a lot of most hot. people could that's not that agree hot. with it that. It was lukewarm. One of the Andrew worst, gonna throw one of the worst rush. Jets by double figure. One of the worst rush defenses. I don't see Joe Namath running out of that. Running backs. Yeah, hot take alert. Pick Michigan pick? to go to the national championship. Why don't you? <laughs> I'll pick the Pistons to go to Eastern Conference Finals. But then you're going to be wrong. <laughs> I know. I won't do it. Call Joey. Set Jets. Give me the Jets, man. Andrew Luck, oh, has, Andrew Andrew Luck once Jets? again. No, Malik, you know you want to go Colts. No. Andrew Luck, does. he doesn't have anything once again, except Eric Ebron. What does that say? Yeah, Ebron. Oh, he's my got five touchdowns. Is T.Y. Hilton hurt? Uh, I don't think so. Dude, I think he, he's been banged up. Oh, yeah. Eric Ebron is Colts just making anything, all these yeah. Lions fans eat their words. He looks he looks like a top five tight end in the NFL right That's now. Because he's the number one receiver. I'm just for saying. The I'm just saying. Regardless of what he is for that offense, he looks like a top five tight end when everybody was pushing him out of Detroit. Because he couldn't catch a ball. I know. I'm just saying. <laughs> That's the oh Lions. Goodness. That's He's the Lions' saying. curse right just there. Saying. That's okay. the Lions' curse right there. He Brandon how to catch Pettigrew, a ball. Eric Ebron. Well, Pettigrew. Eager, yeah, Ebron's Pettigrew. better than Pettigrew. <laughs> I don't know what, what was up with that dude. Uh, Tampa uh, Bay. Pettigrew at, had a good rookie season though. <laughs> one season. That's and then more his than hands, Eric Ebron, I think. And then his hands got Thanos dusted. That's more than Eric <laughs> Ebron. <laughs> Pretty much. Uh, Tampa Bay at Atlanta. <laughs> Give me the Bucks. I'm riding the Bucks wave on this one. Atlanta's got to win one of these games. They're one and four. And growing with Atlanta, <clears throat> I don't trust Tampa Bay. But you trust a one and four Atlanta Falcons? I think Atlanta wins it at home. All right, I'll take it. I mean, Tampa Bay is switching to Jameis Winston, so Jameis show out party. Um, Carolina at Washington Redskins. The Redskins looked terrible on Monday Night Football. <laughs> Give me Cam. <laughs> Give me Cam as well. Give me Joey. Cam. Watch Alex Smith throw for like 400 yards and three touchdowns. Yeah, I'm going to go with Carolina, too. That means Redskins get the win. I picked Washington Um, to upset last week, and it didn't happen. Seattle at the Raiders. Last week, I picked Seattle to upset the Rams, give the Rams their first loss. Almost happened. Nearly. But they did lose. I'm not buying into these Oakland Raiders at all. I don't like – I think Gruden's not done the best job. Khalil Mack would have been a great fit if he still played, even that regardless if he wanted to be there or not. You this team needed pass rushing, and guess what? They they had him. Um, I'm taking Seattle. Seattle just gave the Rams a run for their money. Give me Russell Wilson. Joe. 
I'll go with the Raiders, I guess. That's one. This is one I, I almost flip flopped on because you just, I'm, I'm just going to stick with Seattle. I don't have a good feeling about that one, but I'm going to go with Seattle. Arizona at Minnesota. Easy pick. Give me the Vikes. Josh Rosen got that first win last week. Pick them. But Vikings. <laughs> Joe, you feeling upset here? Come on. No. I'm, you got to pick go against with, the NFC North. I'm going to go with the Vikings. All right. Then we have Pittsburgh on the road to face the Cincinnati Bengals. Bengals have looked solid this year. I never pick Ben Roethlisberger on the road. It's just something I don't do. Give me Cincinnati. The Bengals always seem to mess up against the Steelers. Give me Pittsburgh. All right. The Bengals always seem to mess up at some point. That's what concerns me. You picking Pittsburgh? AJ Green's always been one of my favorite wide receivers. That Pittsburgh offense got on a real roll last week. But I'm going to go with the Bengals. I think they're going to falter later. I was really hoping you were going to pick Pittsburgh. Uh, L.A. Chargers at Cleveland. This is the week I don't pick Cleveland. Give me the Chargers on the road. Philip Rivers, he's he's gonna he's gonna outduel Baker Mayfield. I trust Philip Rivers in this one. He's Although gonna... that Browns defense gives people problems, Philip Rivers is he's really good. This he's gonna, he's a, gonna get it done. There's gonna be another defensive battle, I think. Cleveland is just like getting by with their defense. I'm gonna go with Cleveland. Just wait till. This could be a rough week. Wait till for the Joe. refs stop messing them up and they can really put points on the board. <laughs> Last two weeks, the refs have, yeah, really, I think they have something against Cleveland. Like Mike. everybody else. Buffalo Bills at Houston Texans. Texans. I picked the Bills last week. <laughs> no way am I picking Houston. Texans, Houston man. looks solid. Deshaun Watson looks like he's coming into yeah. his own. DeAndre Hopkins is a video game type player. And Houston's defense is solid. Yeah. Give me the Texans. Yeah, I got to go to the Texans too. All right, and then Chicago Bears at Miami. Give me the Bears. Easy pick. Malik? Bears. This is the one where I got to go NFC North upset Dolphins. I can't ever trust the Dolphins. I have to, keep, I have to keep the Lions' hopes alive, uh, <laughs> even on a bye week. L.A. Rams at the Denver Broncos. Do the Broncos upset the Listen. Rams for their first loss of the year? No. Give me the Rams. I'm afraid that the Broncos. Take the Broncos. Do it. <laughs> do it, Malik. I'm afraid that Von Miller and Bradley Chubb might might ring Jared Goff's bell a few times, which is why I'm taking the Rams. <laughs> Wait, that didn't make any sense. <laughs> because if I think the Broncos are going to win that game, there's no way they're going to win that game, so I have to take the Rams. Yeah, I don't know how the Rams lose this game, but I'm going to go with the Rams. Then we got Baltimore at Tennessee. This is a tough one for me. Oh, man. Tennessee looked good those first few games. What are you going the with? The Bills. I I think that game just might be an anomaly. Yeah. I, I, I don't think that Bills game means much. I'm going to okay. take the Titans. Okay, Joe. Both of these teams are like in the same position where they looked good off the gate and then they <coughs> kind of struggled last week. I got to keep riding with Baltimore. Unfortunately, I have to agree with Joe. I'm going to go Baltimore as well. And then Jacksonville at Dallas. Jacksonville, talk about getting your bell rung. Man, Kansas City really ran over them this past weekend. They won't meet many teams like Kansas City. Give me the Jacksonville Jaguars in Dallas. It's in Big D, though. In the words of Jerry Jones, we need a number one receiver. Yeah, give me Jacksonville. In the, in the words give of me Jerry Jacksonville. Jones. Joe, come on, Davon pick that Aust- upset. You got- Davon Austin has nothing for Jalen Ramsey. Pick America's team, Joe. You trust Enrico Gathers this week? The former Baylor power forward? What you got, Joey? I'm going to go with the Cowboys. I don't know why. <laughs> Another Joey feeling. Yeah. It might Instead be of one. hot takes, it needs to be Joey's feelings. It might be week. one of those. He has more feelings than hot takes. I don't know. The That's whole true. The whole Leonard Fournette situation is kind of concerning. This is a really big game. Too. This is probably game of the week. Kansas City at New England. Kansas City. I'm taking no New questions. England. No questions. No questions. Really? I'm picking New England. You think in, Kansas City? In Foxboro? The way that Kansas City looked last week against the Jaguars, and I know the Jaguars are banged up, but I just don't see where the Chiefs are going to falter just yet. You think You think another year of them just running roughshod over the Patriots in, in New England? 
Yep. I think the Chiefs are going to do what they always do. They're going to have a great regular season and fail in the playoffs somehow. Malik, what's your take? Give me Tom Brady. Uh, when in doubt, pick the GOAT. They finally got the running game going last week. Sonny Michelle, that rookie running back, is going to be pretty good for a while. San Francisco at Green Bay. This is an unfortunately an easy pick. Give me the pack. Give me CJ. B- no, give me the Packers. <laughs> give me Joe. those Packers, man. Yeah, I want to pick against the Packers, but I don't do think, it. I don't think I can. Just do Joe. What if you get it right though? Then the Lions are. It's good for the Lions. Good for you. Yeah. Just tell the people you trust CJ Beathard. Just, just yeah. do it. <laughs> pick San. Francisco. I trust Aaron Rodgers and going to Packers. Matt Breida is looking really good though. Yeah, San he's, Francisco. He's San Francisco's good. had some close games, but they haven't really played anybody. Sorry well, to all the Iowa fans, but <laughs> yes, Beathard just doesn't do it for me. Well, that'll do it for our NFL picks of the week. Um, Joey, like I said, remains on top, but will that last next week? Malik is right there. And I think me and Malik differ right. on a lot of picks this week. So. so we'll see. Maybe a new leader. Let's get into our last division preview. It's the central the division. One. What we all want to break down. I think, it's, I think it's more what you yeah, <laughs> specifically. I kind of really want to break down. <laughs> Uh, the, uh, the least of the East division. <laughs> this is, I think this is going to be the most competitive division in the East. Um, Probably. Start off with the no, Chicago no. Bulls. I, I think Atlantic. top. I mean, Atlantic, you got... It's top heavy. But, but. You, yeah, you have two bottom feeders. Yeah. At least in the Central, it's competitive throughout. True. Um, start with the Chicago Bulls. Last year, they were 27-55. Finished 13th in the Eastern Conference. Over the summer, they added Wendell Carter Jr. through the draft. I think he's going to be pretty good. Uh, Chandler Hutchinson through the draft. Resigned Zach Levine to a monster deal, which I'm not sure that'll pan out. They still have campaign, which I... Uh, I don't know how Cameron Payne's still on the roster, yeah, to be honest Yeah, he used to be you. overseas. <laughs> no, nothing against campaign. And Brandon but, Jennings uh, is overseas, but Cameron Payne has a job. It problems, makes no sense major to me. Problems. Yeah, I don't get it. And then their big free agent signing, Jabari Parker, two years. $40 million, and really, they only lost Jeremy Grant. That's going to be uh, – and they did lose David Nwaba to Cleveland, but those are kind of the two only role players that they lost. Are the Bulls trending up, or are they trending down? Joseph? I think they're trending up. I I put them down as the most improved team in this division. Um, I think a lot of the other teams made some solid moves, but they didn't trend up as much. I like Chicago's draft. I like Wendell Carter. He's looked really good. Chandler Hutchinson has a uh, good upside. And I think, again, it's going to be a test if Jabari Parker can stay healthy or not, but I think he's a solid acquisition for that team. Uh, unfortunately, Laurie Markinen just got hurt. So, Out two months with that elbow injury. So will be a re- at least reevaluated in two months. Right. So it's not saying he's back in two months. So that'll hurt them a lot. He was standout player last year for them but I think Chicago's kind of one of those teams that they're gonna mess this division up they're not gonna do anything special but if teams in the division lose to Chicago it's gonna hurt them I think what do you got Malik are they trending up or down they're trending up for me this is a team a lot of people think this could be a team that just jumps into the playoff picture and surprises everybody I think it's it's surprising to me that a lot of people think they can make so much noise but I definitely look that they make an improvement. I have them going 37 and 45, 10 game improvement. The young guys show a lot of promise. They build more chemistry together. And I think Chris Dunn needs to take take a step. Oh, definitely. To, uh, he's the point. He's jump. the point guard of that team. He showed why he was a high draft pick last year. From all accounts, it, sound, keep on it sounds like he got his work ethic back on pace. There's a question about his work ethic. I think it was last summer. Uh, it seems like he got back in the gym. And uh, took it more seriously this year. So we'll see. How much is this Lori injury going to affect Chicago, though, record-wise, as we go towards the playoffs? I say they, that's the reason they don't make the playoffs, is this Lori injury. I mean, you have to put more trust into your rookie, which which could help. Yeah, in give, the long give, run. In, yeah, the long in the run. long run, which could help making him better, giving him more playing time. But... It will hurt them definitely because without Lori in that starting lineup, they he's won't. Their, honestly, he's probably their best player. He he may be, especially with if with what he may have added this summer. I think Lori Markin had a fantastic uh, rookie they're season. Tr- they're trusted in Zach Levine to be their best player. 
And he's that's looking, bad. He's Don't looking, trust that. He's, he looking, one of the wor- he's looking good in the preseason. But he, he could improve. You're right. He is maybe the most inefficient player in the NBA. Although, field goal percentage, all, although last percentage. year he was, he was coming off of an injury. so That's true. Yeah. That's true. But even before injury, he was pretty inefficient from yeah, the floor. But this, this, has, this has to be a year where he takes a big leap because they, they expect him to. Yeah. They, he, should, he needs to average between like 18 and 21 points per game. He needs to and be they the play a little bit of defense. Guy. Yeah. Uh, Joey, are the Bulls a playoff team as currently constructed? No. Their biggest problem is depth, and the marketing thing only hurts that. I think Bobby Portis is, is a great backup to be able to bring in uh, to replace marketing for a while. He's started in a plenty of games. He's looked solid last year. Um, looking pretty good in the preseason so far this year. So I think Chicago is going to be pretty good, but I, I can't see them making what's, that big of an improvement to make the playoffs. What's the rec- your record prediction? I have them at 32 and 50. I don't think they make a big enough jump. I think uh, this team is a good team in the making and that maybe next year they make a bigger jump. My prediction is 36 and 46, but I did make that record prediction before the Lori injury. So that could have some bearing on it. But I'll stick with it. 36 46, ninth in the East. I still, even without Lori, I still can see them being a pretty competitive team. Uh, next up, we have the Cleveland Cavaliers. Last year, I mean, they're riding a high wave, 15 32, fourth in the East. And then the Savior and left. He, and then uh, that Savior summer dish town. They, Built a new school, but ditch town. <laughs> they <laughs> added uh, Colin Sexton to the, through the drafts, which I really like. Uh, they brought back Channing Fry. They added David Nawaba, like I said. And then uh, they lost, of course. LeBron James to the Lakers. Do the Cavs have a realistic shot at making the playoffs this year? They have a chance, but I, I don't. I don't think they make the playoffs. They they obviously go down, but I don't think it's as down as a lot of people think. The, uh, it will be a lot of people think they're just going to bottom out and be one of the worst teams in the league. Which that I don't think that's realistic. I I think they're a thirty three win team. They still have an all star power forward in Kevin Love. They still have. Productive players. They have a good young point guard in Colin Sexton. And I think guys like Jordan Clarkson, Rodney Hood, and Larry Nance, I think they're going to be more motivated this year. Without this being a LeBron team, they're going to have to go back to the roles they kind of had in – well, Jordan Clarkson and Larry Nance have to do what they did with the Lakers. Rodney Hood has to be more productive like he was with Utah. And I think – yeah, I think 33 wins is pretty realistic for the Cleveland Cavaliers. Joey – Answer the question if it's there. It's a realistic shot at the playoffs, but also, will we see the Kevin Love of old this coming season for the Cavs? Um, I think they have a better shot at making the playoffs than the Bulls, even if Markinen was healthy. I would have said that. Um, Kevin Love will somewhat come back, but this is a Kevin Love. What six years later? So Four. he's he's not going to be that Minnesota. Kevin Love, I think he's going to make a big improvement. I think it's going to help him. And I think it's going to help some of these other guys on this team uh, that we, a lot of people blamed last year for not producing, the Rodney Hoods, George Hills. I think those guys are going to thrive with LeBron being gone. So I think they still have a solid core. They have okay depth. Um, I have them at 38 and 42, just kind of outside of the playoffs. Yeah, K-Love should be back to a 20 and 10 player. I think he should be. I think that's realistic. Yeah. Uh, I'd like to see Kevin get back to maybe like 13 boards a game. Um, I hope they move him. He honestly could. I think he could. He still has the drive. I hope they run run him through the post a lot more now that LeBron is They they did last year, which was in the playoffs, which was encouraging. Uh, I got the Bulls. The Cavaliers going 29-53, and 12th in the East. Uh, I just, I don't like their guard depth. I don't like their wing depth. I think their big men are good. Kevin Love. Tristan Thompson, I think that's one of the better big men duo in the East. But I just I don't care for much. I think Colin Sexton's a year away from being anything that's going to push that team above the playoff line. I think differently. You think he's going he's to help him this year? Colin Sexton. He's a, Don't get me wrong. Listen, he he's has, a competitor. He he's has got, the type of attitude and the type of awesome. energy but that, Russell can Westbrook really, did, that can raise a team, really. But Russell Westbrook didn't even raise a team with that much talent. In Oklahoma City, when he was a rookie, they still won like twenty five games. I don't think they're the same player. I think I think they're different. You think Collins a better going to be a power, better player than Russell? I'm not saying all that. <laughs> I'm not saying all that. All right. Um, <laughs> next up, the Milwaukee Bucks. 
Last year, they were 44 and 38, seventh in the East. They added my favorite coach in the NBA, Mike Boonholzer, <laughs> uh, Ersan Ilyasova, Brooke Lopez, who I thought was actually a really savvy pickup, uh, Pat Connaughton, and Dante DiVincenzo through the draft. They lost Jabari Parker and one of Joey's favorite players, Brandon Jennings, who now plays overseas. Sorry, Joe. Uh, are they trending up or down, the Milwaukee Bucks? I think I they're think, trending up. I think down. Elaborate, Joe. Um, I like what they did in the offseason. It's not crazy pickups. Like we said, like Brooke Lopez was like a nice sneak pickup. I don't think he's going to change his team drastically. Um, Dante DiVincenzo has looked pretty good. Uh, he, they added depth to this team, which I feel like they were lacking a lot of last year. So just having some extra backups uh, that can kind of fill the role for this team. Getting Ursan Ilyasova back, I think, is a good a I good didn't like up. how much they paid him, though. Three years, 21 mil, that's a lot. Yeah, but if you can't get anybody else, I mean, yeah, you gotta spend your money yeah. for a team that's looking to contend. And I just think G- Giannis just keeps getting better and better. And he keeps putting on more mass. He just seems like he is in it to win it. I don't His know shot they, looks a little bit better, too. I don't know if they can completely get it done, but I think they're slightly getting better. And I think Eric Bledsoe is going to have a little bit of a bounce back. Well, See, the biggest thing for me why I have him trending up is the addition of Mike Boonholzer having an NBA-style offense. Jason Kidd didn't have that. Kidd's offense was give it to Giannis, get out the way. If he finds you, he finds you. Mike Budenholzer is going to put together a pretty elaborate offense for this team, which we've already seen in the preseason a little bit, that will help open up the game for Giannis, open up the game for guys like Eric Bledsoe, Brooke Lopez, who's going to fit in that offense very nicely. Mike Budenholzer likes to have five guys out on the floor. Uh, so that's why I got them trending up. Malik, why do you have them trending down? The one thing I trust on this team is Giannis Antetokounmpo. And Chris, Mid- and Chris Middleton, because he's a really good player. Eric Bledsoe is a good player, but can only give you so much. Brooke Lopez is a good player, but can only give you so much. I think Dante DiVincenzo is going to be decent in his rookie year. I don't think he's going to blow people away. I don't away. think he's going to play too much, but yeah, I think he'll be good. I think Malcolm Brogdon should be the starter for that team. I think he's a better fit for them, but they invested in Eric Bledsoe. I think it might take a while for them to adjust to the Mike Bootenholzer system. I just I don't see I don't see them being I think Giannis is the one team that the one thing they're riding on to me. Now I was gonna ask this question, but another I another year of just yeah, riding with on Giannis. I was my next question is can the Bucks be elite? And I know it, your answer is no for this also, season. What is Thon Maker gonna do? Thon Maker just comes in for the playoffs, gets some blocks, gets the crowd <laughs> hype, and that's his role. He has to he has to be better for that team to be elite. He I, has to he has to improve. I think <clears throat> in the Eastern Conference, the way I categorize elite in the Eastern Conference is a top four team. I think they're elite. I got them going 50 and 32, fourth in the Eastern Conference, and are a serious threat to take out a Boston, a Philly, maybe not a Boston, a Philly, <laughs> Toronto team. What do they Giannis have? is the best player in the Eastern Conference. What do they have? I, don't, I haven't seen Kawhi Leonard on the court yet. Giannis Antetokounmpo is the best player in the Eastern what Conference. What do they have to take out Toronto? The Giannis. best player in the Eastern Conference. <laughs> Him Giannis. by himself? I think he could. I'm not trusting by, Giannis by himself. Uh, well, it's him you, versus his, you, him versus Kawhi. But you act like they have nobody around him. Bledsoe is a solid player. Chris Middleton. Yes, he's a good player. Brooke Lopez is I a like pissing killer. Chris Middleton. Chris Middleton like Chris, is a borderline yeah. all star. I like Chris Middleton. Malcolm Brockton was rookie of the year. Yeah, and they have talent around them. It it all but, matter, and they have a coaching style that fits today's NBA and the way you want to play. I, just I don't think see they have them. Make, that's that, what, it's the same team. I don't. I just don't see them making that type of improvement. That's fine. Joey, do you think they're elite? Do you, what's your record prediction? What you got? Well, in the if we go off your description of elite, yeah. I would say that they're elite because I have them as the fourth team in the East, I think. Um, I have them going 47 and 35, winning this division. You think it's only going to take 47 games to win this division? Yeah. Yeah, actually, yeah. Okay. Um, so I think Milwaukee is going to be close. I don't know if they can get over this hump that they haven't been able to get over. But I think, you know, if we go off Chris's de- description again, I think they're elite because I think they're the fourth best team in the East. Even though I say all this about the Bucks, how I think they have a chance to be elite, I think there's also a chance they take a step back. Like you said, Malik, there's a lot of stuff at play here. 
or maybe it just doesn't work out. Giannis really doesn't take that step shooting the three ball. Offense doesn't come around nice. The chemistry isn't really working that well. And maybe they st- take a step back. Maybe they stay at about 45, 44, 45 wins. They have injury concerns. So there's a possibility that they aren't elite. But I think preseason positivity, they're one of the top teams in the East. Next up, Indiana Pacers, 48-34 and 34 last year, fifth in the East. One of the surprise teams, maybe the surprise team in the NBA. Uh, they added Aaron Holiday through the draft, who looked good. Elise Johnson, who's looked good as well. Tyreek Evans, Doug McDermott, Kyle O'Quinn, and they've only lost Al Jefferson and Lance Stevenson. I got them trending up, but my main question here is, can Oladipo follow up this career year he had last year with the Pacers again with another season like that or better? That's my question to you guys. Can he get to that star status? That's the question. He was an all-star last yeah. year. Is he... Is he an all? Is he a star yet? I don't think so. I think he's on the verge. I think he's there. I think this year he reaches star status, and I I think I I have forty eight and thirty four again. I I I like everything they added. All the pieces they have, are, I think, are going to improve. I love Demonis Sabonis. I love Sabonis too. Yeah. Darren Collison is always going to be a steady point guard. He's never going to make a lot of mistakes. He's always just going to be steady. Miles Turner should make improvements. I, I like the, I have this team as the fourth team in the East. I got. Uh, I think they win the division. I have them going forty nine and thirty three. So really close race between them and the Bucks, in uh, in the in the Central Division. I really like them. I just think Bucks are going to be right there with them throughout the year. Joey, what's your record prediction for the Pacers? I have them at forty five and thirty seven. I think they're trending up. I like what they did as well. Just for some reason, I feel like the record's going to fall a little bit. I mean, there's bit. a lot more competition. It's more level. Yeah. So, I think they're going to be around the six, six seed, seven seed. They're going to be in that, that weird mix on the back half of the East. All right. Let's talk about what we really just all wanted to talk about here. The Detroit, what we all wanted to talk about, The Joey. Detroit <laughs> right. Pistons prediction here. I've been thinking about it for weeks. <laughs> Have you? Joey, I have one question for you. I do like to hear that. I had to do it. Do you do you have confidence in in the Pistons like you have confidence in the Lions? I wish. You and did. if of you don't, not. no. If you don't, then it that makes zero sense. That's what I'm saying. Thank you. Thank you, Molly. But it makes per- it makes perfect sense. It's exactly we've said it before. It's exactly opposite of what Chris does. Chris has such high hopes. <laughs> so it makes sense. Chris. Chris has such high hopes for the Pistons that are unrealistic and no hope in the Lions and no hope in the Lions. And you have. So yeah, just it, it works out pretty well. Yeah, <laughs> two unrealistics that are just swapping. Exactly, pretty much. Okay, um, I'm, I'm more harsh on so the. So I'll be the middleman. <laughs> there you go, Malik. He's gonna just take Great. Malik's opinion on this. <laughs> um, last year, the Detroit Pistons finished 39 and 43, finished ninth in the East for the second consecutive year. They added Dwayne Casey, reigning co- coach of the year. Added Glenn Robinson the third, Kyrie Thomas, Bruce Brown, and of course. Zaza Pachulia, the Kawhi stopper. We we gotta stop this. No, no, I mean, I, <laughs> we have to. I even stop sent this. there's a. I saw a meme too, and I sent it to Joey. Zaza Pachulia is not going to make an impact on this team. Watch, uh, watch. And they fired Stan Van Gundy along with the entire front office, essentially. Uh, and they lost Anthony Tolliver to Minnesota, which I think actually is a pretty big blow. Anthony Tolliver would have been perfect in the Casey offense, perfect role player, especially with John Luer being so inconsistent. Henry Ellenson still looking like he shouldn't be playing in the NBA. Um, he's playing better in the preseason than I thought he would, but he's, I still don't believe in him. I, I just, I think he's going to be out of the league in two years. Uh, are they trending up or down? I'll go with the pessimist Joe first. <laughs> I think, I think they're trending up. I think they, you know, the back half of the division or the Eastern conference has kind of filtered out, and I think they have a chance to make the playoffs this year. I like what they did. I like the Glenn Robinson pickup a lot. I think he's a solid, solid three. Uh, he can start. He can play off the bench. Um, so that would be interesting. Again, the biggest thing for this season is can the young guys figure it out? Stanley Johnson, Luke Kennard. I'm hoping that Dwayne Casey can get those guys. I will say, I believe, I believe in Luke. 
in the preseason, Stanley's three ball looks a lot better. Uh, it looks not like he, he would struggle with his release. It'd be different every single time. It looks more consistent. It's going in a lot more. Luke Kennard, I think he's going to take a little bit to get into the swing of things because he didn't play at all this summer because of that knee injury that happened in summer in training camp, or summer league. Um, so I think it's going to take him a little bit more. And uh, so I don't see Luke Kennard starting for this team. But I like those guys. I think, I think they're going to take a step this year. I do. Um, if you sound you sound modest and humble right now, I'm trying to be. But what record is he going to? Hold hit on, us I'm, not, I'm not even going to get there yet. <laughs> uh, if healthy, so Blake, Reggie, I'll play probably about seventy four, seventy five plus. That's a big. If. I'm just saying, if healthy though, big if. Take that into account when I ask you this question: Can the Detroit Pistons contend for home court advantage in the Eastern Conference? Home court advantage, so top fourth seed. No. No. If healthy. No. 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 There's no chance. You just said Milwaukee. There's a chance. You just said Milwaukee. There's was, always a chance. Well, Milwaukee was the fourth. I'm not saying I picked them. I'm just I'm asking if there's a chance. I'm not saying there's a chance. No. There's you're not, you're there's saying there's zero chance. There's no chance. <laughs> <laughs> Is there more they of have a to go, chance? They have to go through Indiana and Milwaukee. They beat Indiana, I think, three or four times last year. It Milwaukee was a little bit different, but it doesn't matter in your overall record. Well, it, it does help your overall record. Yeah, when you're beating up on but teams I, in your division that you I see just, four times a year. I just don't. I don't see it, especially if Drummond keeps shooting threes. I mean, he's zero for six. His three. I, to, <laughs> to be fair, I, there's only one shot that was arrived. All of them have been right there. Cut the experiment. <laughs> yeah. They're not going to though. He d- did it in preseason. It was good that At you least, tried it in preseason. I mean, I'm happy he's just not shooting like three or four Listen. a game. Take it's, like, it's like take, one a game. If he takes them during this, take less than 10 during the season. Oh, Don't dude, take six in a game. If you're a betting man, bet the over on 53s from Andre this take season. Take a wide open three like every 10 games. I, I expect him to probably average one three attempt a game. I might, be okay, I might be okay with that. It, one, one, okay, one. Give him a try. So <laughs> can Casey turn around this team? Yeah, but I mean by turnaround. By turnaround, I mean not. You just mean like playoff team. That's a tough question. That's what well, is turn, that, what that, is turnaround turn, mean with this team? No, that's a turnaround. Well, that's, yeah, be a consistent playoff team. With Dwayne Casey as the head coach, they should. Should <laughs> should Joe? <laughs> yeah, they they should. All right, let's. But they're cut. not going to make any noise. That's the problem. Let's just cut to the chase then. Here, I'll start it <laughs> off first. I didn't, go, I didn't get too extravagant with it. I did kind of keep myself in check a little bit. I didn't get too extravagant. extravagant. 53 wins. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> I have them going 45 and 37, six in the Eastern Conference. Um, but as my little asterisk, I could see them win about 48 games if everyone's healthy through the year, 48 to 50, okay. if they're healthy. Malik, what's your season outlook for the Pistons? 44 and 38. Okay, we're right, on, and we're right there. It took me days to get that <laughs> record. You don't know how hard it was to be determined between 39 and 45 wins. I, I, mean, I, ended okay. up, I ended up going with the positive 44 because I think Dwayne Casey can get these dudes playing really good, especially uh, like after the All-Star break. 44 wins is realistic. They could be a 6 or 7 seed. Joey? <laughs> I'm at 44 and 38. Oh, we're all, okay, guys. We're, you guys are all <laughs> laughing at me, saying I'm going to make some crazy pick. We're because, all right there. Because the more that I think about it, like, man, if they finish under 500 again. Woo. <laughs> With that payroll, boy, number eight in the NBA. They're in trouble. Um, I think they're like a seventh seed in the East. Oh, we've said it multiple times. They can be like six through eight, five through eight maybe. But, man, I... I don't know. Like this team is just so meh for me. You just you don't and, have any attachment. And, it, and that's to them. weird because you look and you see Blake Griffin, you see Andre Drummond, two All Stars. Oh, I'm four attached five. to this team, guys. You don't have to worry about that. I'm attached. Nobody believes in Reggie Jackson, but <laughs> oh, I believe Reggie Jackson. <laughs> He's good at times. Times. And a solid core around them. It's. Okay. it's it's a playoff team in the it, East. Honestly, when you look at that team, if they weren't the Pistons, they're, I think if you slap the Clippers exactly. on that team, their depth people would be a, like 49 wins. Their depth is such a big concern. 
it all it's just the piston. They have pieces to have good depth. It, it's but just, I don't know if it's there. That makes no sense to me. You, they have the pieces, but you don't know Listen, if it's there. Like, you, on, the pieces, on, paper, it's there. on paper. Would you give them a different record if you slapped the Los Angeles Clippers on this team? No. What are you talking about? What kind of... Listen, no. throw Blake Griffin back in L.A. <laughs> with Chris Paul and DeAndre Jordan? No. Yeah, then we'll with this team, prob- people would probably say, like, I mean, not in almost the West. 50. Not in the West. Yeah, I don't think so. Maybe if it, I mean, maybe slap it as, like, the Chicago Bulls or something, and maybe people will say I think that. a lot of people Knicks. just don't believe because of the If Pistons, it was the New York honestly. Knicks, you'd have a lot of people saying... They're like a forty. I, th- I think until the Pistons like make a like at least win a playoff series, I don't think anybody's gonna believe, which might be a long time. I think it'll be this year. Win a playoff. And here series. we go. <laughs> and here we go. Well, that's it for the show today. <laughs> All right, we gotta cut them off. <laughs> yeah, let's go. You know, I'm, you're lucky. That's how you ended the show. <laughs> and they make the playoffs. That was a good show, wasn't it, everybody? Jeez. I'll be honest with you guys. Show. I think I did a good job keeping my optimism in check. 45 wins. That's a pretty realistic expectation for this team if they're healthy. We know you're really holding back. I really (laughs) wanted to say 48 wins. I'd love nothing more than to see the Pistons win like 51 games. I'd I'd love to see it because I'm a Pistons fan. I would just be the happiest person alive. (laughs) I haven't seen a Pistons team. We've been in the dark ages for too long. Man, really the only success I've seen from a Pistons team as a fan has been like 44-38 win team that is rough to call yourself a Pistons yeah. fan and that's I've highlight. been a fan yeah. through all that I deserve some good Pistons basketball <laughs> I deserve it <laughs> oh man maybe in a couple of years you guys got anything else you want to talk about before we uh hop off the airwaves mm. Lonzo and LeBron play tonight is Lonzo right. making his debut tonight yeah. Lonzo is making his debut with LeBron are you, how, how do you think that's gonna look <laughs> I could care less. Rajon Rondo's the starting. The NBA cares, okay? He's the starting point guard. So Lonzo's coming off the bench. Lonzo and LeBron never lost. <laughs> never lost. In the words of LeVar Ball. Hey, Rep Chino Hills, big ball of brand. Let's go, baby. I didn't See y'all say next all that. time. See you guys next time. Bye. Michigan, please just pull this game out against Wisconsin. Please give me something to believe in.